Um, can we move? No, that's not necessary. That's a monitor. That's it's not blocking the camera. Okay. Okay. It does it say red? It is red. That means it's working. It's working. Screen for those who can't see. No, it's green. There's a big screen in front of the top. Is red. And we're moving. So it's recording. recording. See, there's a red dot. The red yeah, dot yeah, means it's think working. You can. Yeah, no, uh, now the screen is getting moved. All right. We're all good. All right. Thanks for bearing with us. Billy owes us minutes. <laughs> Mayor communication. Anything else other than it's on the agenda? No. Okay. Welcome to our new treasurer. We would like the pleasure of your company at every finance meeting because you are kind of the person that knows all about the bucks. <laughs> and that's what we do. We'll be here. First up is our assessor, and you handed us this beautiful document. Can you go over it? Sure. Tell us. Um, so we're here for the classification, um, how to split the tax rate if you want to split the tax rate. So you mean um, between business and residential? Yeah, business and rent residential. So uh, it's the values are broken down by class and the percentages. Um, displays that we can shift. Um, up to like 50 percent to the commercial but in doing so um you're really hitting the commercial with a huge tax bill and you're not really saving the residents much at all just so um, everybody knows we've never split the rate no no not one does. in my history in east Hampton. um there's very few communities that do it's usually um bigger communities mm -hmm. up towards boston um that do it or, or or cities that have a, a bigger commercial base than we have. Um, it's recommended that 20 to 25% commercial before you would do something like I mean, that. What is our, what, what is our? Um, total, we're only at 12. Okay. For, for I don't think I'd do it even if, personal. I don't think I'd do it even if we had 25%. Yeah, um, and, and just an example, um, if you were to use a maximum shift, um, the residential rate would just be set, the tax rate would be just 7% lower, whereas the commercial rate would be 50% higher. So. The businesses would probably be a little. Yeah, and, and it not only <laughs> taxed your real estate, but it would tax their personal property also. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't recommend it at all. Mm -hmm. um, also, you would, you're going to be voting on the residential exemption at the same time. Um, that it, it's for owner occupied would get a tax break, but a tax break in, in the fact that their assessment would be a little bit lower, we can go up to 35% for owner-occupied, but you have to make up the, the difference within that class, so their rate would be higher. So you're making their value lower, but they'd be pay paying a higher rate. So it, it, it's, not, um, it's not that advantageous to do that. Um, you can all, if you're also voting on a small commercial exemption, which you could allow a 10% exemption on certain properties that had more than 10 employees and um, the property was less than a million dollars. But that, this benefit goes to the property owner, not the business owner, and we already have the exemption to exempt property, um, a personal property with less than $2,500 on it. So th those are the things that you're going to be voting at. At the hearing, you can only get the the business exemption if you have property of twenty five hundred dollars or less. That's a small business. No, no, that that's for the personal property. We already. I mean, the personal, personal property, property in internal in yeah, the business. Yeah, yeah. Twenty five hundred dollars doesn't seem like a lot. No. So it's got to be no. real small business. It might yeah. be an in home business or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the in homes are usually ones that have the smaller. Has there been any discussion about raising that amount? I know it's a burden for the office of the assessors to be chasing personal property values. Um, and then I know at one time, I think the limit was 500, it went to 2,500, just it didn't make yeah. sense. And I don't know if a jump to 5,000 makes sense. I'm not sure how much we're collecting. Um, if, if you're gonna jump, I jump all the way to 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I can run you some numbers. On, on what you would be losing. I just don't know how much time you spend to An chase. An enormous amount of time for a two dollar ninety tax bill. For a new two dollar ninety <laughs> cents tax bill. Yeah. If we're spending an exorbitant amount of time, yeah. it wouldn't make sense. No, it really doesn't. No, the cost to our employees versus uh, the value of what we would gain. 
I yeah. would be happy to okay. I'll, I'll entertain you some, some of the numbers. numbers on, on what that. the exact, how many, how many businesses you would be excluding from that in, in the right. dollar I mean, amount? If we're going to lose significant revenue, of course we wouldn't do it. Yeah. And if it's a wash, then maybe that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But that still means the employees would be burdened with going after them, making sure that if they applied for that discount, that they were telling the truth. Is that not right? Well, you're, at any level, you, I'm sure there's some sort of verification yeah. of veracity. Yeah. Only from, if we allow it. We allow that. What do we allow now? We allow personal no, property exemption. This, this, this is for the personal property one. Um, the small business tax. exemption would be something, it would be for the property owner. So we this this twenty five hundred is for the, the personal property the business, the business owner. Okay. So they get the exemption already. And it's already in place. Yeah. How many people take advantage of this? You know. Well, it's not it's not so much taking advantage of if you if your business only has assets. Of t of under twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, you, you don't, don't get even a tax get taxed. Bill. You don't yeah. get a tax bill. Okay. okay. But there's still. But there's a cost in generating. Tax bill there is generating, and, and we have to still investigate each business to see what they have. Mm -hmm. So there's still paperwork involved. Um, so they have to claim they only yeah. have twenty five hundred dollars or less property. Yeah, but and you we have still to verify have, that. Yeah, and we still have the obligation to do inspections or whatnot. So I'm not really sure. And if it's I'll a big, how much more cost savings yeah. it is? You know what yeah. I mean? I agree. It seems like a lot of trouble, but I guess since we still have to investigate those businesses, we're still okay. spending our time Good. doing that. So the last page is the resident CIP stats. Yeah, it just shows how it's changed over the years. The percentage of, of residential versus the total commercial. value is one million six. Billion six. Yeah. Billion. Yeah. Billion. Just realize that. Billion. That's it's the total value of property in East Hampton yeah. is over a billion dollars. Yeah. And it's only gone up in nine years. It's gone up a lot. 286,000. No, 286 million dollars. That's a lot. So we're not dealing with the tax rate. Do you have no, any idea not. what you think it'll be? Um, no. You don't want to say. Okay. <laughs> not in public. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, That's fair. I was going to like talk. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. All right. That paperwork's downstairs. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. That's. No, we don't want to get into that. Oh, yeah. But as, as people don't understand it, but it is true, we can only go up 2.5% over last year's property taxes. And we go up because. The rate can go up, but the amount of taxes the general public pays is only 2.5% more. Yes. So there's a balance in there. That's yes. what I mean. So people say, well, how come I'm paying more? Well, your house might have gotten more value, but somebody else's isn't. Am I correct? Is that yes, too simplified? Yes, the city can collect 2.5% more than they did last year. On the and, and basic property that we had last year, I know there's new growth, etc. That's yeah, added the, to that. Yeah, the new growth added to that. Right. So two and a half percent plus the new growth. Okay. But I'm trying to explain as, to people what does it mean? Individual things, yeah. Well, well, that's what two and a half is. It, you know, everyone just throws two and a half out there, but it, it should be explained a little better. Mm -hmm. Two and a half percent of what the city can collect. I think you said it very, very nicely. Two and a half percent of the total amount the city can collect. Yeah. Yes. And the individual owner the isn't going to get two and a half percent only increase. It could be a lot more yes, if their values have gone through the roof. Okay. And any debt exclusions. Yeah. Wouldn't well, that's on top of, of that. Would not be part of the two and a half percent. Of course. That's not part of the no. And we've started. Who knows this? Do you know this? We've started collecting the the school, correct? We will this year. Have people gotten those tax bills yet? No, well, that's, that's this year. That's so that increase I got on my mortgage wasn't the taxes? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. That must have been the insurance. So when does those tax bills go off? For January 1st. January 1st? Yeah. Okay. 
The mayor will have the phone off the hook all day. I'll be on vacation that month. <laughs> I'll refer it all back to the city councilors. No, the poor treasurer is going to get all the phone calls. <laughs> Baptism by fire. <laughs> yeah, we'll hear about it. Okay. Uh, I the assessor's recommendations are the same as usual, and I see no reason to change them. JP, do you? I don't see any reason. So I will make a motion to recommend the assessor recommendations for fiscal year 220 with regard to a single tax rate for all classes of property with no open space discount, no residential exemption, and no small commercial exemption. Say second. I shall say second. I'm where you were reading. At the bottom of this page right here. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Laurie, would you send this to all the counselors, this document, sure. digital, digitally? Yep. Thank you. And we are having public hearing Wednesday the 6th. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. You didn't have any questions. You should say anything, ask anything. It's okay. I will. I will definitely. All right. I have any questions I will ask. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Jane is here, another transfer. I don't know. But this is for building inspection services. That's under human resources? Yes, it is. <laughs> when did we move it to human resources? <laughs> Let her tell the tale. <laughs> right. As you know, um, our building commissioner, has building commissioner has it up. Can you give me her name? Really? Carissa. 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 C A R I S S A L I S E D. L I S E D. How do you pronounce that? Carissa Lissy. Lissy. New. We don't. We, we call them a building commissioner, not she, the building. She, the building inspector. The, the city has to have a building commissioner. Requires different licenses than the building inspectors. So she's brought in two part time? Two assistants. Marissa is actually employed full time in another city. So she's here in late afternoon. How many hours? As needed, which is nice for our budget. Mm -hmm. Because if she, as she's catching up um, with all of the piles downstairs, the hours are decreasing. The inspectors only come in if there is there are inspections to be done. Um, so, it, is there someone in the office to answer a question? That mm -hmm. is why the transfer is happening. Up okay. until now, the clerical support was 12 hours a week. We, the mayor and I, in reorganizing that department, mm -hmm. felt that we needed more office coverage. Um, temporarily, we put, in, put down there my part-time therapist, who turns out to be very happy down there and is doing a very good job down there. So, Gabby from my office is now in the building inspection office um, 24 hours a week. So you move the HR clerk to building inspection. 24 hours. Well, didn't really want and 12 to hours for you? Time. No. No hours for you? No hours right now for me. Can you afford suffer? Are right. you suffering here? Right now we're, we're doing good. Because you I, still have an assistant. I still have a full time, yes. So right now it's more beneficial for the office downstairs to have more hours. And right now personnel is doing well in up the My only concern is, are there inspectors in the office or the commissioner in a set schedule that if someone, like one time I had to build something, I went and asked questions of the building inspector. Right. I knew what his hours were. Is that we still have, happening? We have posted hours for the clerical. That's when okay. the office is open. She doesn't know the law. But. 
what she can do, what she is doing is we have one of the inspectors that come, is there several days a week during the day. Is that a specific schedule that the public would know? It is not because it changes week to week because he's a firefighter for another year. So it's based on his schedule there. So the other inspector is scheduled as needed. This inspector comes in so many hours per week, but we don't know what they are. They vary week to week depending on his full time work schedule. So if I come in and talk to the clerk, I can say, when will I be able to see an inspector? What they will be able to say that week when they're in. Actually, what a, another thing that's happening is every Thursday when Gabby leaves for the day, she is posting when the commissioner and when the inspectors will be there the following week. It is taped to the door. Okay, so in other words, that if a person wants to come in, she can say, oh, the inspector will be here. Yes. Now, we it's not like that the, yeah, I just want our public to be accessible. Yes, absolutely. Because when I went in, I didn't know nothing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, we know on Thursday what the schedule will be the following week. That's good, okay. Is there some way to tie that to a website? Uh, so that on Thursday it can be posted on the website for, for, for the week of such and such? The office hours are Before, posted. so somebody doesn't have to come into the office to find, to find out, out nobody's there. It would probably be better. I mean, we could do it both places and on the Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, I mean, I candidly, we, we would get complaints all the time because the, the office was open and John was out doing his job. Right. You know, I mean, you, you know, we're encouraging. But typically, to John was there. I mean, he was there what? Seven to nine, eight to nine. It depends on the schedule. Tip, but typically, you could find. But you expect to find a building inspector there first thing in the morning. The contractors come in; they want to resolve whatever they have to resolve for that day. But if we say that Christian is going to be yeah. here on Tuesday from eight thirty to three, and then he well, I, comes you, in I don't think you'd say that. I think you'd say, look, from eight thirty to ten thirty, you give them two the public at least two hours. That was always posted, and yeah. because of the nature of the schedule, yeah. and that he was nine to five. Things yeah. change. Right. Yeah. So what I like about this structure, as it's, it's put together now, is that Carissa, who is a commissioner, is there uh, available in the late afternoon and evening to talk through things, not only with contractors, but also residents. And now we have the ability to do after-hour inspections, as well as weekend inspections. With the part-time. Yep, and, and, and with, so what yeah. did you, you just said she's there every day, but she's posted, right. if we post the schedule, unlike yes. before, that she will be there this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 4.30 to 5.30 or 6.30, that's def definitive. In other words, last time John would be out doing inspections even though the office I mean, was open. I mean, I'm not casting any aspersions, but yeah, he was only project, by and it's 8 o'clock is the contractor meeting, and he's supposed to be in the office 7 to 9, he's going to hit the road. He has to he do his job. I mean, that, that's one of the, you know, and to get folks into this habit of, of scheduling or in posting the hours every week, you know. But by having a clerk there 24 hours, resident, a contractor can call and say, when can I meet with an inspector or the building commissioner, and that could be definitive. Gabby the clerk, yes. Gabby the clerk. Yes. She'll learn more about what's necessary for someone. Yes. Yeah. If someone comes in, I need to do a permit, she can at least get them started. She can give them the application, she can right. tell them we also need this and we'll need this amount of fee. It's, it's working out because Carissa is, the hours that we post for Carissa, I would say a good 90% of them are in the office. And you know, she may have one or two Carissa being the commissioner, she's not out inspecting because now we have two part-timers. She, right. She, she could go and she does go to the bigger projects. Right. She's doing a lot of the plan review. I know she's been working on one ferry. Mm -hmm. She's been working on, um, she worked on Williston. Yeah. So it's nice that... 18 Cottage. Yeah. The bigger one, she's out there. Right. And, and maybe the smaller ones, if, if there's some problem. I mean, but with the way that we've split it up, you can schedule an inspection or have on Saturday morning. Are the part-timers paid by the hour or by the inspection? 
one is paid by the inspection and one is paid by the one that comes in during the day is paid by the hour because it's more official for us to do yeah. it that way. The one that comes in late afternoon or evening, um, he's paid by the inspection. And that's that kind of rate is set by the state or somebody? No, it's, mm -hmm. it's a just a negotiation mm -hmm. contract. So they're contracted, right? The two of them? Um, Christian is a part timer, yeah. considered a part time employee. Okay. Um, Ron is he's an employee, but he's paid by the by the inspection. Okay. Yeah. But we, you know, it's nice because we also have Christian working with Fire yeah. right now on annual inspections for the licenses, which in the past John would have had to make time in his day to go and do these annual inspections. Okay. This sounds to me like you're going to catch up on a lot of inspections. Yeah, I've already spoken with Carissa, and she said that the progress that they've made already is, is good. And if it's a slower week, Ron's not getting any inspections. If it's, you know, if Christian can't work because of his other schedule, Ron, you know, we have more coverage. So you know, Ron only coverage. covers if Christian can't do them. Or if there's, for some reason, if there's a lot of inspections. Right. Trying, Carissa is truly trying to process them through us. Well, it helps the contractor. That's great. It's a good. This sounds great to me. I mean, I know we were behind before, and some permits weren't actually followed through on. Yes. I believe there's some. If somebody does a permit, they have to be inspected before the permit's okayed, and then yes. the assessor doesn't get the fact that there was a permit, so there's no new growth because the permit never went followed through, right. which will help our tax base. I like things. I just think that even though we have more part timers, <laughs> they're all part time. Yeah. And I think the total hours is even less. I was going to say, we're still under the hours. We're still under the hours, but I think there's more public. And you're just transferring money that you had in your office for this clerk to that it's office because she's not working for you anymore. And the money in the budget for the personnel line for the building department is still sufficient to divide, divvy up under the new structure of paying part timers. Well, with this twelve thousand. No, no, that's separate. That twelve thousand is further. Down there covers because it's an increase in hours for, for the clerk. The twelve thousand well. covers the clerk's hours. Only. Right. It doesn't cover. No, the inspector is still covered under the budget that was. Down under the budget that was down. Because you divided one person's salary three ways. Mm -hmm. in a sense. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And Ron is like, if there's an inspection, then it's a fee. It's thirty dollars for everyone. Oh, really? Sounds inexpensive. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds good. I mean, it was good. Whose side are you on? <laughs> Our side. That's great. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jay and Carissa worked very hard restructuring that to expand coverage and opportunity for the public and keep us within the existing um, budget for the salary of the building commissioner and, and to increase. I mean, a lot of times people are walking in during the day and they're looking for an application or they're looking to drop something off. And, and John had a system to get that done, but people love giving you know, their applications to a person and she can go through the checklist and say, okay, that's great, that's great. It's like, wait a minute, no, you need you know, a, a plot plan or, right. or something like that. So they don't then get a call two days later saying, hey, you don't have a plot We can do it. It sounds Chris's, like yeah, the contractors and businesses are yeah. going to be very happy that they're going to A response within delayed. 24 hours is, is right now what she's working towards, and, and she's pretty close. And is our electrical plumbing inspection okay? Is it covering everything? Given that the building commissioner can't approve it until those inspections yeah. are done. Well, there's been no change in those departments. No, uh, right? yeah, right. same. Same. So they kind of let it go. How about businesses? They're always looking for turn quick turnarounds on information. And geez, if I take this idea in this yeah. commercial zone, and I'd like to be able to convert this, can I do it on the first floor of the site? You always have those types of questions, yeah, but which 20, get yeah, to the building hours. inspector, and that's yeah. the they're even important. seeing they're seeing a face, or they're getting a call to get more information before they within 24 hours and then permits are processed. I don't know if she's had 24 hours yet, but she's getting, that's her, her standard. But yeah, we're being responsive, um, you know, to the just, 
hey, I've got a client, right, who's looking to build, and can they do this on the first floor? We get back to them within the day and ask for more information or just refer them. Right. And they you know, also, talk when they call in, they're also getting a voice to yeah. take the message. Right. They talk away in the voice. Well, I like this, and I'd love it, Jane, if you explain this whole new structure to the uh, council. <laughs> I know you love to get up there, but uh, I will mess it up. But it sounds great to me. Uh, I'll share something else, JP. I'll move that we approve this transfer. Uh, second. Can I just say that? Please. I'm not sure about the I assume that was for the mayor's uh, mm. point of view. <laughs> I was looking at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't hear. So noted, noted, Jane. Noted. Yeah, yeah. All in favor? All right. Okay, this is up for public hearing the sixth. I don't mess around. I don't. Is that it for the agenda? That's, That's it. it. We're not always that kind to the treasurer. Just want to get it. 